Hello and welcome to this episode of the Online Therapy Podcast. I've got here with me Monica Kiros um, and I want to introduce you to her today and I'm going to um, get her to tell uh, the listeners about her. Um, I'm very excited to have her because at the moment she is in Mexico um, and sometimes she lives in Canada and so this is a really interesting podcast to be doing from here in Australia while she's over there whilst the borders are closed of a lot of countries it's really interesting this is a really interesting time to be interviewing someone in another country despite me not even being able to travel there so um, so welcome, Monica, and tell um, the listeners a little bit about yourself, thanks. Thank you, Renee. Thank you so much for the invite and for organizing this. And I feel the same way as for what you're saying. It's so cool to be connecting with someone on the other side of the world and, and seeing how things are and, and even seeing how we can support each other. So a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Monica Queiroz. I'm originally from Brazil, moved to Canada 20 years ago. Um, had a long uh, history in corporate, uh, corporate finance, uh, and uh, I find that uh, at some point in my life when things got really hard, I went through what I like to call a dark night of the soul, and I really realized that my path was a different one, and counseling really spoke to me. Right? The idea of being able to um, help people in a holistic way, bringing in my South American origins and my my beliefs and, and um, my truth, I must say, to you know the learnings um, in North America of counseling. So it was a beautiful marriage, I must mm. say. And um, yeah, so that's a little bit of me. I'm a registered uh, therapeutic counselor in Canada, and I. I spent part of my time in Canada and part of my time in Mexico. So basically when it gets cold in Canada, my husband and I, we come to, to Mexico and we stay here for I don't know, four or five, six months, depending on, on how things are in Canada. And then we go back. So we, we go back and forth. And um, yeah, that's a little bit about me. Yeah. So the borders closing in some countries, is that going to affect you coming back and forth? Ah, uh, you may. And, and that was a hard decision we had to make. Do we go back now or do we stay? So yeah. We found that, that where we are, um, we're okay here. So we have decided to stay and wait for everything to um, clear out in, in Canada because right now things are quite complicated. Everyone is basically in lockdown at home, quarantined. And here we are to some extent as well. And we're doing that voluntarily, uh, my husband and I. Uh, but uh, we find that um, in Canada, uh, it seems that it's even more serious than here and possibly even because of the weather as well, right? Yeah, yeah, sure. Absolutely. In, in Australia, we're now heading into full lockdown. Mm -hmm. um, we've done this transition period over the last couple of weeks, but particularly the last week every day is more and more of a lockdown. So this Tuesday, it was recommended to take your kids home from school, but the schools are still open because of the emergency service workers and the like. Um, so, so yeah, so, so here we, we're quite in quite strict lockdown. We're not letting anyone in the country. We're allowing Australians to come back home that's it. Yeah. And there's very few planes arriving from elsewhere because it's only been Australians allowed in. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So that's kind of where that's at here. But I mm -hmm. wanted to kind of get to you and what you do and how you're helping people in these times. Yeah. Well, that's, uh, that's where my heart really is. Hey, that's, um, I, I find that everything that is happening in the world, I'm a believer that things happen for a reason. And even though they're painful, it doesn't mean that it's good that it's happening. But if we can stop for a moment and, and connect with the learnings, what can we learn or what can we change from what we're experiencing? And I find that um, we've been living in such a um, busy world and suddenly we all had to stop, right? And, and I'm finding that having um, an, a 
platform, either a social media platform or having the capacity of bringing our services that support people, mm. having that capacity of doing it online is crucial, crucial in this moment. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm very thankful actually for, um, I, I believe the universe works in, in mysterious ways and guides us where we need to be. But I find that it's quite interesting that out of the blue, I saw something about this woman in Australia that was offering some uh, <laughs> online training for groups because that's where I'm heading. I'm head, I want to do more and more that the piece. I really needed that piece as well, right? Yeah. And one-on-one and, and, uh, and in groups. And I thought, oh, okay, maybe I should check that out. And, uh, and yeah. how awesome that uh, in a way I'm, I'm being able to even put all of that to use. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because, because it's, it's so needed right now. Yes. And it's to have that foundation. Yeah. So you feel confident when you do your work. And that's what is happening for me. Yeah. Um, part of my training in Canada also had the option of online. So I was yep. already seeing that that was a way that I wanted to do. Yep. Yep. My work. So yep. I took that and then with the piece that I learned with you from your, yeah. from your training, that coming together, I mm-hmm. find that I feel like very comfortable and confident, even in bringing in creative, yeah. Things, yeah. which is so awesome. Needed. Yeah. Right? I so love that. Yeah. Because yeah. then it, it, it brings the different um, quality. Because a lot of times I find, I don't know if that, that happens with you, but I find that when we talk about online counseling, most people think of only talking. That's yep. it. Just talk. Yep. Right? Yeah. Kind of like, yeah. Um, top, bottom, and and, yep. and not a bottom up approach. Yeah. Yeah. Incorporating uh, the feelings in the body, incorporating yeah. movement, incorporating creativity. Yeah. And there's so much that can yeah. be said and can be done with that. Yes. So, yeah. So I find that it's fascinating that to be able to bring that into what we do. So yeah. we even help people get in touch with part of them of themselves that they had forgotten. Yeah. Yep. Right? Absolutely. That, that brings them peace, that brings them joy, that brings them yeah. hope. Yes. For this, this time. Yes. We need hope, don't we? Yeah. We do, we do. Hope is so necessary. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. I love that you brought that in because it sometimes and some days for all of us, myself included, can feel hope. Um, yet if we can hold on to hope together, so it's not, it, it, it's also to not feel so isolated too. Mm. And and I also love when you did the training with me too. And the timing is just impeccable in terms of what's happened to the world because We've never seen this before in the world, never. And so we are in uncharted territory. And yet somehow spiritually you and I have prepared ourselves for this. And I think we need to go there on this podcast because I don't normally talk spiritual on this podcast, but we have to go there. So (laughs) um, I keep being guided to keep plugging away in this space and um, my guides were just like uh, for so long and I've done dance movement therapy groups on in this space like as an attendee so I'm like wow I didn't realize that was possible and so then that got me thinking with how I could then help others to make sure that I train them well but I've I've worked in um, you know, um, online education for quite some time. And so, you know, um, I was already running groups. I've run group supervision, all that kind of stuff. So there's, so there's lots of groups I've run, I've run business groups, mm-hmm. therapeutic mm-hmm. groups, all, all online. And so many people were saying, you can't do that. And I'm like, watch me, you know. Um, mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so then, you know, I've utilised almost um, reworked the concept of, face to face to the online space but accounting for energy and spirituality and creativity and i yes. think that's what's been missing in all the other online practitioners so i just want to bring it back to you then and almost reflecting on what you were saying <laughs> because then let's go with 
spirituality and how you feel that um, applies and creativity as well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I love what you're sharing. I find, of well, course, I can totally relate to this cannot be done. Oh, watch me. Yeah. It's taking the challenge and go, yes, it can, right? If there is a, yeah. a will, there is a way. We're going to find a way and we can. And yeah. you're showing that, that it's possible. Yeah. And, and it's, it feels so good when you, when you put your heart into what you're doing and then you yeah. see someone writing you and say, hey, I love this piece or hey, this helped me a lot. So yeah. there's a lot of, um, it's not even validity. There's a lot of fulfillment and yes. purpose. Yes. Between what we came here to do. Yes. And I believe we each have, hmm, we each have our own path and our own purpose. But when we tap into that purpose that is, you know, that it belongs to us. Yeah. Beautiful things happen. And that's where the universe, God, spirituality, whatever name, cosmos, the, the name, yeah. the packaging, the name for me, it doesn't matter. Like we can call it whatever we want, but it's that the good energy kind of like helps us, pushes us and an opportunity starts to pop here, pop there. And then yeah. out of the beginning, how many times have you noticed that? You're, you're yeah. thinking of something. Oh, I wonder, I, I, I go yeah. a lot about time, right? Yeah. And yes. I, oh, I wonder if I should do this. And then suddenly out of the blue, it's something that pops in your screen or a friend that yes. tells you about the thing you were thinking of doing. So uh -huh. these informations that a lot of times we, it's our own intuition also speaking, and we tend to, you know, hide that and bringing that um, to our clients as well. I find that people are actually thirsty for that, for something extra, for something else. And for me, how I bring that into, into my, my work is uh, through many different ways. I bring that through even um, connecting with, with clients with, for example, um, even using like props, like crystals or helping them uh, really integrate and, and connect with their body. There you are, right? Yes, I'll show you my, my, my mandala or or doing things and, and of course each person is lovely yes even even that like even connecting with your clients creating a special ritual that works with you and your client something that speaks to that client and it's it's not one kind of like size fits all it's it's really specific for that person because we're all different yeah absolutely so, yeah so for some people will be even uh using i don't know i have i'm i'm in about today i'm all excited because i was just reading the the proof from the, the cards that i'm creating and and my book mm. it's coming together so i'm very excited Excellent. About that. yes and uh and i use like cards for example where we can also connect and i know that you you love that piece too i saw that uh yeah. connect uh with uh, with ourselves using different ways Yep. Right? Um, to bring Definitely. in getting clients to draw or to yeah. use their bodies or to create shapes and yep. that they can express and notice what happens when they move even sometimes their hands when yeah. they're going through something. So there are quite a few different ways to bring that in. And I like usually to start with a, with a prayer mm. right? or, or, or something that is uh, that comes from the heart to open the space yeah that needs to happen yeah yeah I also want to go to your background again because I think it's fascinating for the for the listeners to hear so mm -hmm. I know you were talking about um you know coming from Brazil mm -hmm. living currently in Mexico going between Canada and Mexico but I want I just I just want to go to to some, I mean, we've, we've had, I've had personal conversations with you before, like, yeah. you know, recently, but I, I feel like I want to capture that somehow to, mm -hmm. to talk to the listeners. Um, um, just in terms of perhaps the, um, the Indigenous aspect or First Nations aspect mm -hmm. of, of what mm -hmm. you bring in, and I think that's so important right now. So yeah. 
can we touch on that? Um, I want to make sure that I am particularly sensitive around that at this moment in time, mm -hmm. but also mm -hmm. that the that the listeners hear what you have to say from a point of view of wisdom. I think you bring a lot of wisdom into this space. So I wanted you to talk to that. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, hmm. I find that, um, that what I bring in um, taps a lot into what we call shamanism. Yeah, right? yeah. Uh, which is um, the spirituality coming through um, the indigenous people. Yeah. And, and we do have them in Brazil and, and it's, it's really, really sad like what history shows that has happened to yeah. the culture, to the people, to the land. Yep. yep. Right? And, and I, I find that it's quite interesting because more and more people, independent of them being connected or not, yeah. in terms of, of, let's call blood or lineage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they are um, awakening to, to the wisdom yeah. of that culture and to what it brings. Yeah, absolutely. And, yeah, and, and so for me, I, I find that um, there is a, there is a um, you can call it a philosophy or um, religion in Brazil that is, uh, it's unique to Brazil. It was, it's born in Brazil. And what is beautiful about that, in my view, is that it brings in um, all the wisdom from the natives. It brings yep. in the wisdom from the Africans because we have a huge influx yes. of Africans. Yes. Yeah. And it brings in the faith and, and, the, and the wisdom of um, the white man. So yeah. To me, it, it makes it this beautiful, perfect triangle when we, when we all come together. Yeah. Pieces. Yeah. And, and, and through that um, philosophy or religion, if you want to call, there is a, a lot of um, connection with guidance through spirit and, and, yeah. from, and, and even different aspects of them. So there is a, a let's say, there is a part that connects to the natives there's another yeah. part that connects to africans yeah right? so they, and and coming all under one and knowing that the most important thing we all have we're all humans and the most important thing is right here in our hearts yeah it's, it's our energy our intention and so yeah. i um i really allow myself to empty my mind when I'm when I'm working or yeah. when I um, yeah to honor all of those yeah that are from my land yeah from world yeah you know, to really allow whatever needs to come through me to come through me yeah I'm, yeah you know, so so I just want to I just want to kind of reiterate that because you, you're getting a bit soft in your volume. Um, yeah, so just that um, we need to focus. If we're, if we're going to work spiritually, it's about focusing from um, that lineage. Um, so I liken it to that even with some of the spiritual work that I might do, obviously not the same, never the same. Yes. And I don't, I don't personally have any Indigenous lineage. Mm -hmm. um, Though I, I do try to call on my um, uh, grandmothers and and their their grandmothers yeah. and and what have you into the space of what I work on, so it's really interesting that you bring that in because it's at times it's what would their wisdom bring in, and yet now that we're in a an interesting time, I have this sense we still need to go back to some of this indigenous style wisdom you know yeah. across yeah. the world first nation wisdom because a lot of the first nations people around the world have been so traumatized and what did they learn from that because we're mm -hmm. having collective trauma mm -hmm. and now how did they rebuild themselves we need to look what an interesting aspect you're bringing in. I mm. really like this, especially mm. with everything that is happening right now with us. Yeah. Right? How, how did, huh, I never thought of that, but it, it's true. Like how, 
Hmm. How was it for them to feel that, that their own space was being controlled and, yep. and invaded? And in a way, collectively, yeah. we're all experiencing that now. Yes. And it's not, it's not another man, but it's a virus. But they have, they yeah. had pain. Yes. Yes. And, and how do we rebuild from yes. that? Exactly. What this experience? And I, I think the only thing from my perspective, I've been thinking about this, is it's it's not exactly a war, but it's almost like a war within, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And so then, um, and that has been what the First Nations people around the world have suffered, in Australia in particular, because, mm -hmm. you know, their babies were taken, you know, um, all sorts of things happened here um, terrible things um, and then it's how to rebuild that mm. yeah how do we start to go back to those it's almost like back to basics yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah what you're saying even in Canada we also had all this impact it hasn't been mm. that long ago yeah uh, that uh, the schools were closed right schools where all the indigenous children would be yeah. taken from their yeah. family and, yeah. and sent to those schools. So imagine that the impact mm. on, on the family, on the fabric. Oh, know? yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. So there's, a, there's a lot of, of, of healing that, uh, that needs to happen collectively as well. And, and I yeah. think even with them as well. And, yeah. uh, and that's why, in a way, I love the work of uh, family constellations and family mm. systems because we really yep. start to look back to see what is coming, what is trickling from our ancestors. Yes. And then back, what are we carrying? What are we holding? Yeah. A lot of us are holding things we're not even aware we are. Yep. Yep. And, and I love that you brought that in because... Um, there's new research around the epigenetics of that actually being the case. So we actually do have trauma passed on in our genes as well. So there's multiple layers of why it's good to look back on your ancestors, but also how, how did they deal with trauma, with grief, with loss, and how did they come back from that? Absolutely. And the piece that I love to think is, when we talk about what we inherited from them, yep. like the trauma, yep. we also inherited a huge amount of resources, tools. Yep. And and I believe that it's through tapping into those tools. Yes. And owning them. Yep. Allowing them to show up in our daily day to day. Yes. Is that we're gonna start to also with a lot of love mm. and compassion and Patience, we're going to start to heal those. Yeah. Over, right? Yes. Absolutely. This is this has been a fascinating conversation even just now. And we haven't really talked to, we haven't prepared for this. It's just been, it's blowing my mind, but awesome. <laughs> Every conversation I have with you does. Um, but I think we're, um, you know, it's, it's almost like this thing of same, same, but different kind of thing. Like yeah. the, 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 yeah. in, in, in Thailand, they have a saying, it's same, same, but different, you know? Yeah. And so um, I've been lucky enough to spend some time with um, some Indigenous elders here, some mm -hmm. um, uh, people who do, um, you know, Indigenous forms of dance therapy and all sorts of cool stuff. And this is the kind of thing that they talk to on a regular basis. It makes sense. It and does. in this world of kind of oversaturation of media and social media and news mm -hmm. and all sorts of things where we're getting bombarded with so much information, mm -hmm. it's important to not only get back to the basics, but what did people in the past, how did they cope? When things yeah. were shut down or things didn't exist, how did they do things? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And that, and that, it's funny because I'm looking at your your background and I'm seeing your painting there. And uh, and to me, I was gonna talk about nature because yeah. that's that's the importance of, of nature in our lives. Yeah. How, how do we leave behind a little bit all this busyness? And I think that that's part of the lesson in this time. Yeah. 
um, huh. it's, it's really how do I connect in a deeper level with, yep. with myself yep. when I can't really go anywhere? Yeah. How can I connect with those that are in my life? My family, yeah. my, my kids. Yeah. Right? I'm, I don't know if you've seen that, it was, but with my clients, what I'm noticing is that there's been a lot of tension in the home. Yes. Because when, when have we ever spent this amount of time nonstop? Yeah. Yeah. With our loved ones. Exactly. Exactly. All the work I've been doing at the moment is exactly that. Is um, there's a concept called cabin fever. I don't know if you have ever heard of that, but we talk about cabin fever in Australia. You know, when you when you're basically cooped up with nowhere to go. And that's uh -huh. exactly what we've got right now across the world, cabin fever. And already I've heard from colleagues who work in this area, domestic violence has shot up and yeah. things will start happening more. We need to learn how to work on our feelings and, and be honest with our communication with our loved ones, even if we're good at this stuff. So the people who don't know about this and who don't have the tools or skills because their parents didn't teach them, what what that what then you know so yeah. um how are things going in your um world on that note yeah uh on, on my personal world what i what i'm doing and right now like my kids are, are uh young adults so they're in canada and i'm and in mexico basically me my husband we have a little kitty cat that we just rescued and our two chihuahuas so up here and, and what I'm finding is that I really need to work on that balance of um, togetherness and at the same time, my, our individuality. So that are mm -hmm. times where we're, we're blessed in a way that our home has space where I can yeah. sometimes even spend hours and hours in either, either here in my office or, or in my room yeah. and, and we have yeah. another room. So he has another room for himself. And so we have space to move around so we can come together but we can also have our own individuality because I think yep. that balance between those two is, is so so important yes but what I'm seeing with with a lot of um a lot of people is that there's a lot of tension coming up and, and even yeah. even with us there's times that yes inevitably you, you spend so much time together yes. that you start kind of rubbing on on the little wounds that are uh, hidden way way in yeah yeah um, so for me, what I've been doing that helps me a lot is I journal, I write, yeah. and, I, and I try to see what is underneath all that is happening. What is yeah. really happening for me, inside yeah. me, Yeah. instead of simply, uh, um, each person will have a different way of reacting, right? For some yeah. of the attack. For me, I will distance. Uh, so, yeah. so for me, the work of not distancing and yeah. real realizing that okay breathe yeah. what's really happening okay yeah. so now you're ready to come back so kind of yeah. like finding this, this balance and i'm seeing that a lot i haven't heard anything about um domestic violence yet i haven't seen that with, uh -huh. with my clients but i do not doubt because uh, yeah. these times these trying times will bring up a lot of even old trauma yes okay? Exactly. And, and, and then it's creating new, it's creating new trauma at the same time as bringing up the old trauma. So it, they, it's really, yeah. you know, coming. Pounds, right? Yeah. So we've only got probably another minute um, yeah, before we can, can you imagine? <laughs> like, wow, we could talk all day. Um, so I guess I just want a couple of things about you now and where people could find you and what you believe you help people the most with and what your groups are so kind of give us a bit of a summary about um you know um where do people find you on the internet or how do they connect yeah. with you yeah. yeah absolutely thank you for that well i have my own website so people can find me on um, www.soul-free.com uh, i have my instagram uh, page which is soul free therapies and also Facebook, which is uh, so free wellness. So those three ways. Um, what else? I'm also listed under your website. So yes, you are. Well, yes. yeah. And uh, 
I find that um, I usually help people deal with anxieties, deal with yeah. uh, depression, but, but more than that, it really connecting with their hearts, connecting yeah. with life and, yeah. and, and finding peace. I think that yeah. that's, that's the greatest gift yeah. to be able to find peace in your life. And so that's, right. yeah, that's the piece that I do. Yeah, in terms of, of groups, uh, I usually run um, once or twice a year, I usually run a uh, sacred feminine type of, of group where it's for women awesome. to connect and, and, and have the sisterhood feel yep. and, and bring in a piece of spirituality merging with psychology. So it's, yeah. uh, it's a beautiful gathering. Yeah. yeah. And so are you running ongoing therapeutic groups as well as that, or just the, that particular? No, group? for now, just this particular group. Yeah. Okay. It's great. Then, it's then it works, but only after I finish my, my cards and the book, then this is the next one coming. So then the package, the package will be coming for everyone. Wait, I think, um, I, <laughs> Sounds like it's going to be brilliant. You know, I'm interested in your cards. <laughs> I hope I can get them. And this is going to be the issue. So this is maybe something for you to think about is um, uh, postage. It can be difficult in these times. So it might be, are you going to bring yeah. out some e-cards e or something as well? Yeah. Those, those who might not be... <laughs> who yeah. might not be able to access them over here in Australia with you over there. <laughs> We'll have to sort that out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'd love to get some e-cards once <laughs> once you're done. I'm not sure <laughs> if you have to get the physical ones anytime soon. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Yeah. yeah so this, will, this wave will, you know, calm yes. down. And, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Eventually. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So thank you for coming on, Monica. Um, and I'll just reiterate it um, to, to catch up with Monica. It's soulfree.com so it's um www.soul-free.com yep correct. yeah um okay. and that sounds like the best way to contact you and then you're on instagram and facebook as well um okay. so yeah, yeah um you'll be able to check out a copy of this in, on youtube i'm putting this on, on youtube for all the listeners um to, so you can see us talking um we are real and not just like you know <laughs> Anyway, robot. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Um, and for those of you listening in on Spotify or iTunes or um, Google Podcast or any of the others, um, yeah, you can also just um, look up um, Monica www.soul free.com. So, and um, as always, um, I'm at www.aott.com.au. And um, anyone who's a therapist or even someone who wants to know what a therapist should be doing online um, can contact me too. I'm keen to get it out there that how to professionalise this space while coming from the heart too. So uh, um, I think this has been a brilliant conversation around all of that. So <laughs> thank you, Monica. Um, thank you, Renee. It was lovely as always seeing you. I really yes. appreciate you. Yes. Yes come together again. Yes, love absolutely. Thank you Thank so you. much. Um, I Same love talking here. to you every time. <laughs> Same here. Okay. Enjoy your day. Bye.